GBH News turned educational civics content into a game show for YouTube and Instagram, and they did it while constructing new remote workflows and bringing in new talent. This is how they got it done. Hey, I'm Asante Bean with the Pointer Institute, and I lead VidSpark, our initiative to bring local news to younger audiences through social media video. We spent a year working with GBH News, an NPR affiliate in Boston, Massachusetts. The newsroom in the past has done a lot of content um, that is translating their reporting um, and existing stories um, for social platforms, but they hadn't done anything um, original um, on social platforms for this audience. This was the first time I think we really put together especially to this magnitude, video specifically for social. The existing YouTube channel for GBH News wasn't specifically curated or targeted to viewers within the platform. We had honestly treated YouTube a little bit like a back end for our website. We didn't treat it as a platform in and of itself. Because we wanted to have a specific content strategy and reach a distinct younger audience, we decided to create a fresh YouTube channel for the series separate from GBH's previous YouTube channel. At first, GBH planned to create a series of election explainers, but we encouraged them to think creatively about what new formats we could try to reach a new audience. We held a brainstorming session. A lot of other outlets are already out there doing explainers and they're doing them really well. And you know, with our, what can we do best with the resources that we have at our disposal? And so we decided to try something a little bit different. I wrote on a post-it note game show and I honestly was just trying to get as many ideas out of my head as quickly as possible as one does in a brainstorm. And I had no idea that the idea was going to go anywhere. But as we started talking about it, people got more and more excited about it. And that's what we ended up doing. We made a game show about democracy and civics. The search for a game show host began. Once COVID-19 hit and the team was working remotely, they expanded their search outside of Boston. It just opened up a whole range of possibilities that otherwise we might not have considered. We wanted to bring on Malik as a host because he's incredibly charismatic. He has a sense of who the audience is for a show like this. I mean, he's built his own audience by creating news content for social, and he continues to do that. Welcome to Internet Expert, the game where you and your laptop can save democracy. I'm Malik Mercier, and this week we're diving into digital advertising. Malik Mercier is a student journalist at Ithaca College and hosted internet expert for GBH. When I heard of this opportunity, first off, it was just awesome because, again, it was like focused on Gen Z, especially leading up to an election. I think that was also really exciting and made me really want to do this show was um, knowing that we were going into a pivotal election and any way that I can help our generation understand that is something that I'm down to do. Biden promoted his agenda to the Latinx community with an image using what Spanish phrase? Both seem laser focused. I know, very in it. I have to say, this is fascinating. I did not know you could like search ads and see all of this. With Malik's strong Instagram presence, it made sense for Instagram to be the second platform for the show. Working remotely also provided flexibility when it came to the game show contestants. I loved this one that we did with two young elected officials. They were both, one of them was the youngest ever elected city councilor to Berkeley, California, and one was a state rep in Illinois. And, you know, they just, they had never met each other before we put them on screen together, like a few minutes before we were ready to go. And they really wanted to talk to each other. I remember just after you were elected, I saw an article that dropped about your race. And you said, uh, you'd, you'd be fine handling yourself in the Indiana State Legislature because you're used to being the only Asian in the room. So people's expectations of you, the discrimination, it didn't bother you. Are you Korean by chance? I am. Yep. 저는 uh, 저는 반 한국 사람. My uh, my mom's side is Korean. So many of the guests had that great quality where like they didn't know each other before we put them on screen. Um, and when they did, they just were really fun together. While the remote workflow allowed for a wider range of casting, it wasn't without its challenges. What's the most challenging part of this process been for you? Um, every, do you want all of it? Uh. <laughs> Switching to remote production really meant that we had to work a lot harder, right? And having to work a lot harder in the context that we were in was not easy. 
right? This was not an easy year to work in a newsroom in America. There's a lot of things for a 10 minute video that have to happen from the casting to the recording and the, and the writing process and then out to making sure that people can see it. Uh, and we chose a fairly ambitious format, which we wanted to do. The most challenging thing overall was like, you know, how can we get this out to more people while also working so hard on the production? And I think, I think that we had varied success with that. While being like sort of slammed with the production, it was hard to do also audience development as well. We learned uh, so much around outreach and how to identify specific communities that might be invested in um, specific issues. We had some really great wins um, from the experience, uh, specifically uh, through student reporting labs, uh, through the MediaWise program, uh, there were a lot of great partnerships that came out of it. Keeping the audience in mind is not only helpful in terms of outreach efforts, but also in adapting the video series over time to better connect with viewers. We were looking out for comments on YouTube and Instagram, but we also wanted to get direct, robust feedback from Gen Z. So Pointer conducted an audience panel where students gave feedback on the newsroom's videos towards the end of the program. One of the big takeaways as far as creating this kind of content for YouTube is just how important it is to know who the audience for something is from the beginning. If we're going on to do a second season, we would just make sure that we had more audience feedback earlier and that we could be responsive to that. While season one of Internet Expert has wrapped, the newsroom is carrying forward what they've learned, particularly when it comes to optimizing videos for YouTube and Instagram. I really appreciated all of your pointers, uh, no pun intended, on how to, how to um, maximize for YouTube. I think just more broadly, it allowed us to take a step back and understand how we can use those platforms more strategically and that it's not just a matter of putting a video that you've done on Instagram or YouTube, that each individual video really has to be maximized for those platforms. When I say that, you know, it's changing how we're doing things in the newsroom, I'm very serious about that. I can't tell you how full my inbox is of like, you did that thing. Can we do that thing? Tell us how to do that thing. If you want to do the thing and bring social first videos to your newsroom, then you can check out our playbook of lessons and best practices at pointer.org slash And you can check out GBH's Internet Expert series linked below.